section on so it is DYOD now. My name is uh, Vidha Bharatwaj with the double A at the end. And uh, I uh, work for a company called Voltais which is into cloud backup. And whenever I meet a lot of clients uh, in the cloud space, uh, I get to hear this lot about DYOD because with this cloud technology uh, getting adopted so much that people are uh, kind of bringing their device into the enterprise. So I thought it would be a good topic to uh, talk about in such a forum. So that's why this uh, topic on, so it is BYOD now. So agenda is uh, very simple. I'm going to go over the statistics and uh, then about the risk factors and how do you contain those risks, okay? When I say you, I mean the enterprise. So what exactly constitutes a BYOD? Uh, BYOD as uh, you all know stands for bring your own device and all handheld devices, your phones, your tablet devices, your Kindle, your ebook readers, all constitutes uh, BYOD. Now if you notice uh, over the last decade there has been a surge of these devices in the market. Okay. Now what are the factors uh, that lead to that? One is that there are several vendors who have started making these devices. Okay? They come with various form factors. They make it very attractive. They come in various uh, diverse operating systems. So if you are an Android fan, obviously you will go for something which is Android handle device. If you are an iOS fan like me, then you would certainly go for an Apple device. Uh, they all come with varying features. But one thing that is common across all these devices is that they are all IP enabled. Another reason which makes this BYOD devices very popular is the applications that are available on these devices. They are really cool applications and uh, which makes them very popular. So uh, when I say uh, the momentum that has picked up over a, a decade and a half is that uh, there are around 5 million Kindle devices that were sold last year. There were around uh, 2 million pre-ordered iPhone 5 delivered, uh, you know, when it was launched. And there were like 35 million sold in Q4 itself. And it is told, I mean, these numbers have got it from the Gartner and Foresters. And uh, there are about 1.2 billion smartphone users worldwide. Okay. And 81% 80, of these users use it for their personal as well as at work. And it is told, uh, Gartner says that by 2014, 90% of enterprises will be adopting BYOD. Okay. So this is something uh, that needs to be uh, taken a look at and has to be considered seriously. So what is happening in the enterprises now? You know, there is a shift of mindset. You know, earlier what was uh, controlled by the IT, you know, IT used to be the command and control. But now everything has changed. User becomes the boss now. They want to bring the devices of their liking, you know, what they are comfortable with. And they want enterprises to allow those devices to their corporate network. So the employees are like, give me the access to your network, give me the access to the applications on my device of my choice. Okay. So what is IT doing? I mean, IT is like, okay, uh, I need to kind of, you know, think about how to manage the security of these devices? How do I make them compliant? Okay, so that's a big challenge for them. And what is the business overall saying? The business says that, okay, I want a good ROI on this mobility. You know, I want maximum ROI. I want uh, my business to increase. And I want at the same time all these devices to comply with all the policies that have been set by IT. Okay, so this is what business is demanding. So there are these three key players in an enterprise and they have their own demands and challenges as well. Okay. So uh, if I uh, kind of dwell deep into uh, IT's role, if there are few folks from IT here, what was earlier happening was that, you know, they had control about everything, the devices. There was consistency with devices in the enterprise. You know, you had the similar type of laptops. You had same kind of OS version running on them. There were patches installed on time. Okay. So they had complete control over the devices. They knew 
okay how many devices are there in the organization at any point of time okay and they had visibility into that then comes next website access you know it would control some of the notorious access to some of the notorious sites you could just not go and visit some of the sites totally no no especially if they could feel that there there is a possibility of a malware getting downloaded you were just blocked from using those sites then comes your applications you know again there was a consistency there like you know if i would get a set of application my colleague would also get the similar set of application okay there would be some difference based on the job roles if i am into sales then i would get access into salesforce crm zoho and all that kind whereas my colleague who is uh, in engineering may not need access to those applications and hence would not get okay so it was a very controlled environment and it had a visibility into that okay and last but not the least the endpoint protection laptops would be having all those anti viruses uh, you know updated and there would be always those alerts going there and popping up saying that hey you need to update your signature files okay so this was a scene some time ago when it was completely under control what is happening now now the end user is the king i bring the device of my own choice now the configuration of that device is totally under my control it doesn't even get to see my ipad which means that i can uh, have a password locking mechanism on or off it's up to me if i find that bothersome every time entering my password i may keep it off but that's it strict no no for an it guy right then website access i can go and access any website i feel like it could be a gaming site or it could be a whatever site and nobody stops me from doing that okay because i am the king and then applications the whole concept of app store you know has changed uh, has there has been a paradigm shift because i go and get any application of my liking and if you notice these app stores some of the apps are free so i get to try and get a feel and get an experience okay which was not the case earlier i don't even know that some of these gaming uh, apps i mean what do they install on my uh, you know on my handheld device they keep pushing updates on that i don't know what's happening I mean, so that's another thing and last and not but not the least is endpoint protection i never have antivirus running on my device so if it is jail broken okay then the whole security of the device is like you know uh, is at risk anybody can install any application and can manipulate data which is residing on that device and that comes to one more point and that is encryption of data my data is not encrypted on my handle device so which means that it makes it very susceptible to any kind of attack okay so this is the scenario now what was it's what was under it's control is totally under my control now so how does an enterprise embrace this this rising trend of byod okay. and at the same time manage the security and compliance so if i if you notice there are three broad categories of risk one is network risk because there is always an unauthorized access of the network okay i'm carrying my ipad and i sit in a coffee shop in coffee day and i just want to connect to the corporate network and start working sipping coffee next to me now how safe is that i'm accessing a either free wifi or public wifi i mean i don't know who is going to sniff on that network so that is network risk and i open any file of my liking and which could be uh, which could have a hidden malware inside it okay so that is network risk second is my application risk when i download all all kinds of application from the app store i don't even think twice you know i just read the reviews there are a couple of reviews which i do not know whether the person who has written the app himself has generated it you know i mean there are possibilities there saying giving all kinds of stars to it and saying that oh wow this is a great app and all it's only after you install you realize that hey it crashes every 2 minutes you don't know why it's happening okay so that is application risk and the last is the device risk okay like uh, the survey says that 24% of these byod users do not keep their password do not keep uh, their devices locked okay they find it very bothersome to keep have a password 36% of them are uh, allow you other users to use their device you know if you have kids at home you can't keep away your ipad they are going to use it so kids you never know 
accidentally they may be uh, downloading some of their gaming software and causing a lot of uh, hassle. Okay. Then comes your uh, un unencrypted data on your device. Right? I never bother. I just download a file or I create a file using uh, Notepad Lite and I never bother to even encrypt it. Okay. And I just send emails. Uh, I, I just don't bother what state it is. Okay. So this is about the device risk and of course the endpoint protection. Now, uh, when I talk about BYOD, I mean, it's like a double-edged sword, okay? So, whereas there are a lot of these risks uh, which are uh, scaring at us, at the other end, there are some advantages too, okay? Now, companies who have adopted BYOD have uh, stopped investing on laptops because when you are bringing your own device, they don't want to invest again on, uh, you know, purchasing the, some more laptops and saying, this is office laptop, this is home laptop and all. So some of the companies are coming up with this policy that, okay, we won't invest on the laptops anymore because each one, you know, one wants to get a Mac, one wants to get Windows. So why should we bother? Okay. So they are saving on the capex. Another thing is the study says, uh, you know, uh, users uh, kind of work and collaborate very well when they carry their own device because they are so comfortable. The user experience is so smooth, you know, that they kind of their productivity really goes high. And uh, as per the survey, uh, this is what uh, Juniper has published in 2012, saying that uh, the productivity has increased by 42%. Okay? Because uh, you want to sit anywhere in the open campus and work, you want to sit anywhere in the, while you are traveling by bus or, you know, things of that kind. So productivity really goes high. You are in the airport, you, you are very responsive to your emails. What you earlier used to be like, you know, to take a couple of hours, now you just want to immediately respond to emails and get things going. So the productivity has really gone up and as a result, it has affected the top line. And of course, there's a better employee retention rate because employees are happy that they can bring their own device, okay? which is also a very important thing for an enterprise. Now, so what are uh, companies then worried about? Okay, so is are they worried about their devices, policies, or what is it? So it's actually it comes to that that they are worried about the data. Okay? Every company has consumer data, sales data, financials, company, I mean employee data, all that. So companies are bothered about the data that the asset that they have. That's the asset that a company has. And that's what they are worried about as to how can we protect when we allow various kinds of device with diverse operating systems with no endpoint protection, uh, you know, to be handled. Okay. How can I protect my data? Okay. Because once your device connects to the corporate network, it becomes a lo local conduit. You know? Once I have that connection, then I can do the wonders. Okay. So how does a company protect its asset? Okay, so that's what they're worried about, without affecting the productivity. Okay. Another thing they want is, how do I contain these risks? Okay. How do I manage around these risks of application, devices, and network, and yet be productive? Okay, and the last factor is cost, okay, which is also something that cannot be ignored. So, uh, some of the things that a come enterprise could do is, they could categorize their assets. Okay? When I talk about assets like uh, computer info, uh, all my customer information, all my employee details, employee profiles, and so on and so forth. So, can I categorize my assets in such a manner that this is a very sensitive data, this has to be accessed by only certain set of people who are a part of certain network. You know, something like that. So take a stock of those assets okay, and then categorize it. Decide on access policies. Like, you know, if it is sales, then yes, they certainly get to access their sales forecast and all that. But if it is an engineering guy, he doesn't need to know all that. So there could be policies set like that, that, you know, uh, which what kind of a job role you have and what are you allowed to access. Ensure military grade encryption. This is something that they can enforce. Okay. 
so that the data that is accessed and that resides on your disk uh, on a handle device, it is encrypted, okay, and it is doable. So they can come up with this kind of a policy that yes, any data that is accessed will be encrypted on your local disk. And then there can be some kind of an agreement with an employee when he brings his BYOD device saying that, hey, you are okay to use the device of your choice, but if, in case your device gets compromised, then the company has all the rights to remotely wipe off your corporate data on your device. We don't touch your personal data, but whatever is corporate related, whatever is enterprise related, we'll remotely wipe it off. So that kind of an agreement with an employee so that he understands the seriousness. Okay. Now about how to contain these risks. We, we, I just spoke about the network device and application risk that, uh, um, that these BYOD devices pose. Now what is the solution? One of the solution is uh, network access control. Okay. So, uh, if you see in an enterprise, uh, who are these users? They are either employees, they are your partners, they are your guests, or they are your um, contractors. Okay? So, these are the four categories, broad categories of people who walk into a company every day and you know need access to your network. Okay? All those applications, all those documents and all that. So uh, what do I do? I mean, what does an organization do uh, for this network access control to be enabled? So first thing is they need to take a stock of their enterprise. Okay. So what stage it is in? So the, there are four uh, you know, stages that you can uh, classify broadly. One is that you're in a disregard state. Okay. That is, you don't care what device is coming. You just, you just don't care. You don't allow. Okay. Another is block. You say that I'll allow only certain devices, rest are all blocked. Okay. Third is that you say that, okay, I will allow uh, these, these, these devices, a set of devices of these operating systems uh, and I'll contain my risk. Okay, but not all devices are permitted. And I'll embrace this BYOD completely. I'll allow uh, devices of any kind, any make, any operating system. So a company, I mean an enterprise could be boxed into any of these four depending upon its readiness for adopting the BYOD. Okay. So how does an enterprise transition from a don't care mode, that is disregard mode, to a completely uh, adoption or embrace? Okay. So first thing is that they need to work towards having 100% visibility to the network. They need to know at any point of time what kind of devices are connected to their network. Okay. They need to have a 360 degree view of the whole thing. Like you know what kind of uh, access points I have, where have I installed them, who is trying to access it, what is the type of device, is it a smartphone or is it a tablet device, is it an e-book reader, what kind of a device is that. Okay. So complete view of uh, you know all the devices that are coming to your network. Now, uh, the study says that 60% of the enterprises have adopted BYOD, but unfortunately only 9% have a view of their uh, you know, entire network as to who is, who is bringing in what. Okay. And this is Gartner's study of uh, 2011. And they say that to bridge this gap of risk and embrace is through network access control. They need to know because there are enterprise applications. Okay. Now they need to uh, port these applications into various, uh, into various mobile OS. Okay. Like you know if I have, uh, I'm just giving an example of Salesforce. But it is actually a cloud app so anybody can use it in any way. But I'm, uh, I'm giving another example of Evernote. Okay, which is an app on an iOS which is also an app on Android I think. So when I have applications like that, I need to also invest effort on porting these apps. So if you bring your Android device and I bring my iOS device, I need to kind of, you know, if I am told to evaluate that, okay, which one do we port on first? So what is my, uh, what is the flow? I mean, what is the kind of uh, response from users? 
you know, what is the percentage spread? Is it like 50% or Android, 50% iOS, or is it like, uh, like in US you have 80% iOS and 20% Android, something like that. So I would kind of prioritize that porting uh, based on uh, the kind of people who are coming in with those devices. Okay, so to take that call, and I'm, yeah. having individual applications is that it is a lot faster. Okay, it uses your computer power of your handheld device. Okay, unlike I, you know, I do a push and pull every time from the website. Okay, so it has its own advantages. You know, like when you have these apps on your own device. Okay, so every time I don't have to connect to you, your network to uh, do any kind of work. You know, download or upload and all. If I have my own device, that application running on my device. To kind of weigh whether you know what you're talking about is desktop virtualization, where you know I beam all applications to your uh, phone, which I'll be coming to, of course. Uh, but uh, you know, it's like 50 50. Sometimes it is better to have an app, sometimes it is better to beam applications by whom, and then comes where, where is it being accessed from. I mean, are you totally out of this network and you are accessing from an airport or you're from a coffee shop or you are sitting in your, uh, you know, uh, in your office outside in the launch and trying to access it? So, where are you accessing it from? And then when? What time of the day are you trying to access? Because there are some applications which uh, enterprises do not want to be accessed if it is after certain shifts of the day. And the best example is healthcare. So after certain hours, I mean your shift is done and you are not allowed to access that application. Okay. So these four things need to be answered to get visibility into your network, which is very, very important when you are trying to adopt uh, BYOD. Then comes the policies. Okay. What kind of policies do I set around all these what, when, where and uh, who? Okay. So you you define policies around this. You take a stock of all your assets. You decide who is going to access them. Take a stock of your assets and say that I will allow access to some of these which are low risk uh, from to be accessed from anywhere. But if there are some sensitive data, it has to be accessed from the corporate network within the within the four walls of the organization and by only these set of people only at certain times of the day. So you come up with these policies uh, after deciding, taking a stock of all your assets. Okay. Then the last thing is, how do I control the costs? Okay. So one thing comes is when I am owning a device and I am bringing my device, what should an enterprise do? Should should they rent the device for me? Should should I own the device and you reimburse for my whatever internet bills for me? How what kind of model should be there? Like you know, and how should I track that you know you are using this device for your office work for these many hours? Okay, so some kind of a mechanism has to be worked out so that you know companies can reimburse that for you. Okay. Then comes your uh, the cost involved in expanding your network. What was earlier, you know, like you had few access points here and there. It won't work like that anymore. With more BYOD devices coming in, you know, you need to have more access points to accommodate those various devices. So you need, and you also need to expand your wired network also, okay? Because they get their laptops too. On an average, I believe uh, every employee carries at least three handle devices. Okay, so there are at least one smartphone, one tablet device and one laptop. Okay. So they have to work towards, uh, you know, coming up with a cost as to how do I expand my wired as well as my wireless network. And of course, you need to work towards provisioning those access points. Okay. 
that's another uh, challenge that they have. And I said, as I said, uh, there are a lot of uh, enterprise applications which will need to be ported to various mobile diverse operating systems that these mobile devices have. So that's again another cost that they need to think about. Okay, now about some of the solutions that are available in the market for onboarding your devices. Okay. Uh, one is that uh, you, this network access control, which is something that companies want to adopt first. You get a complete visibility into your network and have these appliances installed, which kind of monitor every device. And have these policies enforced. So Bradford Networks is one which is uh, number one in uh, network access control, which kind of provides uh, these uh, uh, features. Okay, and it's called Network Sentry, that is their product. Bradford Networks. Yeah. Then uh, there is a solution from Cisco called Cisco Unified Access, which is an enterprise mobility solution, and, uh, which is also doing very well. Then there is a solution called Simple Connected Solution from Juniper. And, uh, uh, coming back to your uh, question about desktop virtualization, then Citrix and Mocha 5, these two companies uh, are very popular. Citrix, of course, is into virtualization big time and uh, they kind of help enterprises beam the entire uh, you know, uh, desktop onto the mobile device. They create a, some kind of a sandbox kind of an environment where you know it is very secure and you can do all your work. Uh, basically, an enterprise decides as to what kind of applications you will get on your device. You get to work on that, and once uh, you know your job is over on that, uh, you know it's like uh, and if there is a compromise that happens, and they can remotely wipe it off. So it gives them a lot of control over it. So that's something which is doing very well. And Mocha Five is again they call it a bubble, and which is again a virtualization environment on your phone. So they beam that bubble onto your device. And uh, there are several applications that can run inside this bubble. Okay. And uh, it's highly secure, the data is en encrypted and allows uh, both upload as well as downloads to happen from your corporate network. Okay, in their network, uh, you know, if any new device is coming in on that particular network and they will give the status what exactly the device, which OS is running and what is the, you know, risk factor, they will continuously running the scanning on that, the security scanning on those devices on background, if, you know, if they found anything on that, like the, they have the trap and all, which will communicate to the sysadmin and all. Kind of. So what is the name? Infoblox. Infoblox. Yeah. Okay, any questions? I actually did just a while at work and I needed to do it. So we, we, we built Android devices and we just compile Android. So on laptop, the usual compile time is around 100 minutes. 100 minutes? Yes. Okay. So, and uh, I tried to go different types of execution and sometimes when the, the time went up to three times, goes up to 300 minutes and you actually sit and you can't do anything while that's going on. So, how do you handle that? Okay, then uh, the only thing I would suggest is uh, build it in a secure environment. Because the solution for this is if it is taking too much time, then it's not worth doing it remotely. Or do not do it in an insecure network. Do not be a part of insecure network. Even, even while it works, huh. so the source code obviously, if anyone gets access, it's bad. Yeah. So if your laptop gets stolen or something, it's gone. The people who carry around documents and everything. The documents you can get encrypted, that's fine. You can print that goes down. The compile time goes like almost one and a half to two times. 100 minutes is already bad and we're making it 200 minutes as well. I guess the only choice now you have is that you have to encrypt it and wait for those long hours and watch a movie during that time. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good.
Did you try SSDs? Yeah, I tried it on a couple of SSDs, but it, it still goes still through. bad. Yeah, still bad. Yeah. We are working with that. Yeah. I do have public SSH access to my work machine. But still, that there are times when you could, you know, grab 3 GB, 4 GB of data, and transferring it takes a lot of time. So why you are talking from there to here? There should be some. From where you can run the local workstation there, you know, connect the VPN there and there it should be no, so, 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 the local network. So, so I prefer using a decent IT and uh, I, I prefer an ID over when or yeah, when. Yes, it, it's yeah. the first time yes. you know, downloading from there from local yes. workstation to here. It's, it's, you know, normally what we use to prefer if something application you need to run a VPN, connect to VPN and uh, you know, use the local machine in local network and uh, perform there. We use some different. remote desktop technology, yeah. v VNC, remote desktop, things like that. But again, you need a bandwidth yeah, so and a with, powerful yeah. VPN, you know, maybe a VPN. My house is much higher. Right. So, <laughs> what was the problem with VNC? So, the thing is, the upload, the, the, upload, the upload speed there is bad. The upload and download speed at office is a little bad. Yeah, see, I mean, this yeah, is wrong, right? right? I mean, as soon as you say that your bandwidth at home is better than office, no, that's no, really no, bad. No. I mean, that's not good. Then that, then that's then the volume of your company. Connection yeah, your, your company needs to get that. Uh, I have a question here.